Hey everybody, what's going on? Your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza here. Welcome back to Let's Play some more uh, PGA Tour 2K23. We're going to be taking on the Old Marina Golf Club. As you can see, we got a pretty huge lead in the FedEx Cup standings. Uh, I just set my, uh, my rival to finish out the Tier 2 set. Uh, we're going to be taking on Tony Finau. He was ranked a pretty fair amount better than, well, I guess... Will Zalatoris was pretty close. Uh, Justin Rose was way behind him, but I think he actually fared better than Will did uh, in in the matchup we had with him. So we'll see if uh, Tony's got anything to offer here. Uh, he's going to be giving us um, maybe like a new ball fitting, some shoes, and a new hat. So we'll we'll check that out. And then I was looking in the my player stuff. In my fittings area, it says that I have something that I haven't addressed yet, but I went through all of the ones that I have, and I don't see anything. <laughs> so, I don't know what the deal with that is. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. There must be something that I can obviously fit. Oh, it's probably this one, actually. Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe that wasn't the one specifically they were talking about. But either way. Yeah, it says that there's something else that I can fit in there. I'm not sure exactly what it is right now. I'm not going to sit here and spend a whole bunch of time on it. So let's get down to business. Let's go play Old Marina. See if we can uh, walk away with another another sizable win here, since we haven't really had a lot of resistance outside of like the first two tournaments. Those were pretty close. Otherwise, we've been really running away with these uh, pretty handily. So let's check it out. I just got done uh, going to the grocery store. I took Harrison with me. I went with uh, with Michaela. We went and got some stuff done today. It's my day off. I'm so tired though. I, last night I went up to Portland um, with uh, with my uh, friend Maddie. We we hung out with uh, with a friend of ours that lives up there. We went and got some food at uh, Chang's Mongolian Grill, which is one of my favorite places in the entire world. It's just, uh, it's kind of like a buffet style. I, I've talked about it here before. It's like a buffet style joint where you just like, you pick out like all the raw meats and stuff that you want and like all the different types of like veggies and you create the sauces and then you take them up to the, up to the cooks and they grill it on like this giant, uh, on this giant grill, uh, right in front of you. It's pretty cool. Um, and then it's just kind of a, you pay a flat rate and it's all you can eat. And I'll be damned if that didn't damn near kill me last night. It was so, so good. Um, but at the same time, I had one of those, I had one of those moments where you go, you go to a buffet and the first plate that you eat, you like, you're absolutely unfazed by it. Like I inhaled the first plate, no sweat, didn't even really think twice about it, so I was like, alright, I'm ready to, ooh, I'm ready to go, you know, for my next plate, so I get up there and I go and I make basically the same thing, ooh, seven under, not too bad, oh, Will Zalatoris is up here at four under, but he went through 18 holes already, so, that's, uh, that's definitely not going to be good enough to stop us here, we'll be there in uh, basically four holes, um, so yeah, I, I went up to make my second plate, and I basically made the same thing that I had made the first time up, and I started eating it, and I got like, I was like, okay, I, I, could, I could definitely see myself finishing this, but then once I got like halfway through, I was like, oh shit, I'm starting to get full, uh, but you know, I was like, I, I can probably still finish it though, and I should be fine. I kind of had that moment where like you start to get just like that little inkling of feeling full, but not to a point where you're going to be in trouble yet. And then I took like, I don't know, like five more bites. And then all of a sudden I went from being just a little bit full to catastrophically like, oh my god, I feel like I'm going to just puke everywhere kind of full. Oh, get in there, get in there. Yeah. yeah, Tony and everybody else aren't the only ones that can ship it in. I finally got one to go, too. I think the last episode we had like three or four opportunities to chip it in, and we just missed all of them. But that's a good sign that we're getting them in early. 
So, um, but yeah, it was it was rough. It just like I felt so fill packed, and like every time I would, every time I would burp a little bit and try to get rid of some of that, just like extra air or whatever, because I'd also had a root beer on top of it, so I had, like, that carbonation in there, too. I was like, well, maybe if I just, you know, maybe I can relieve some of the pressure. And, uh, well, truth be told, it didn't do anything. Um, and, like, I turned into a, just, like, a regular fucking Chevron factory, man. I was just ripping ass for literally the entire rest of the night, and I still didn't feel any better. <laughs> Just like no, no pressure release, nothing. Um, and we probably after that we probably went and did one of maybe one of the worst things that you could do after you've gone and you know eaten yourself into complete oblivion like that. And we went, uh, we went and did karaoke after that. And I'm sitting here thinking, oh my dear God, like, like it. It's a challenge to breathe right now because I'm I was so full over it and I was like, how in the hell am I gonna be able to to handle singing and doing karaoke in a state like this? Oh okay. Well we kinda overshot that one a little bit, so let's bring it back right there. Um yeah, so I'm like, how in the hell am I gonna be able to manage being in a state like this? <laughs> you know? And so, uh, but I did it anyways, and I, I was at that moment, like, on the way over there, I basically almost fell asleep on the way over there, because my body just took in, like, 7,000 grams of carbs, which, a total lie, by the way, but it was, it was a lot. It's not a good sign when, like, within an hour, not even, yeah, I've actually, like, within an hour of having finished my food, I'm already completely done for I was like, we, we went back to the car and I sat down within like 20 minutes. I was already starting to pass out because <laughs> I already had the meat sweats and just the carb destruction in my body. Um, and so I'm also, you know, in there like, well, if, if I'm going to be able to continue for the rest of the night, I'm going to have to, you know, probably slam a couple of, uh, of Red Bulls to try to help myself along here. Oh, this is going to be rough. I don't know if we're going to be able to get on the green the way that I'm thinking. Um, but I was able to I was able to do it though. Um, somehow, some way, made it happen. I didn't do uh, I didn't do a whole lot cuz there were a couple times where I was in mid-song and I went to like I went to take a breath to get ready to do the next the next part of it and I like started to throw up in my mouth on the way up. And I was just like, oh god, it, <laughs> I need to chill. <laughs> Otherwise, there somebody's gonna be doing a full scale cleanup on aisle five in here. Oh, oh, two for two on the chip in circuit. Let's go. But the question is, would I do it all again? You know what? I sure would, because I I'm a fat kid on the inside, and sometimes you just gotta put up with it. Uh, but I'm also a fat kid on the outside. I, uh, I weighed myself yesterday. This is, this is so nuts for me. And it was kind of a, a nut, it was a moment where I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have to start working out. I stepped on a scale, and I came, it came up as, uh, 241, which is fucking insane for me. Like, when I was in high school, I was just like, I was a bean pole, man. Like, you, like, I could have, I was like an Ethiopian kid. I could have, like, stepped into the shower and fallen straight through the drain. <laughs> you know, it was, it, like, that's how slender I was as, as a kid. And, uh, I feel like we're going to overshoot this, but maybe not. Depending on how much loft we get, it may bring it all the way back. I'm going to, we're going to give it a go. Um, yeah. So, like, when I was in high school, I was, like, struggling to, oh, are we going to dunk it? Oh! Oh! We hit the damn pole. <laughs> that was nuts. Our aim was spot on. Just a little bit too much mustard, though. Let's, uh, let's go right there. Come on, get in. Oh, no! Damn. 
I want to try to like not rely on the putting guide too much because I feel I feel like it's almost a cheat code, really. Like it makes it makes it almost too easy for us to make things. So I want to like I'll use it. I'll use it a little bit more sparingly. I realize that I used it a lot last episode, and I feel like it's it's almost making it too easy. Like I'm already winning the I was already winning these tournaments by a lot as it was without using it. So I'll try to like scale back a little bit on that. Um, if it's one that I feel like I should be able to judge it, you know, on my own without the use of it, then I'm gonna do that. If it's like a pretty crazy one where I've got like this like fucking horseshoe of of break going on, I'll use it for that. But otherwise, I'm gonna try to scale back a little bit here. Come on, Tony, give me some resistance, man. I'm already up six on you. Um, but yeah, so like me, me being 36 years old and I, I'm, you know, at 240 pounds is kind of nuts, man. Like I would have, I would have never, and a lot of people that know me really well would, would agree. I would have never envisioned in a million years that I would weigh this much and like there's a number of reasons for it, and I, I'm kind of the creator of my own misery out of this uh, but it's also you know like I've had a lot more like lack of discipline in my choice of things that I that I eat um, you know I uh, you know I haven't been getting enough sleep I haven't been nearly as active as I want to be like the kind of the scope of my activity during during the day is mostly just being at work because I'm so tired when I get home that I just I don't have it in me to go to the gym and go and you know bust my ass when I just have so little energy to to, to go with and I'm relying on you know really high caffeine and energy drinks just to try to like stem the tide and, and keep me going that it's a uh, it's kind of just been a recipe for disaster for the last like year or so I'm thinking right there. <laughs> Go figure. The moment that I've that I've stopped using that thing, I'm I'm getting sloppy. I'm getting a little sloppy. We're gonna be okay though. I mean, it, it, we're only three shots off, and we've got like 13 holes to go, or 12 holes to go, 11 holes to go, whatever the hell. Um. So yeah, dude, it was it was rough. It was it was kind of like a it was kind of like a shot in the gut. The, the proverbial gut, if you will, where I was just like, man, I really did kind of let myself go a little bit, didn't I? Um, and, like, I've noticed when I look in the mirror, I can't stand the way that I... I can't stand the way that, like, my body fills out a t-shirt. It just, like, drives me crazy. Um, just, like, the way that, the way that like, my jeans fit is really awkward and uncomfortable. And it's, uh, yeah, it's something that it's it's really kind of bugged me a little bit, so I think, uh, and you know, it's the perfect time to, to start, you know, taking matters into my own hands and doing something about it, because, you know, it's it's turning into summertime now, so, you know, it, there's going to be nice enough weather to be able to go out and, and do things. So, it's good, you know. It's just, uh, oh boy, yeah, that, was, that was a rough time. Two big hits there, knocking it on this par five and two. Oh, that was me. I was like, Did he, he, there's no way that Tony Finau went and dunked one from that far away. Let's take a look at what Tony Finau's up to. He's happy, he just came off a bed. Man, those shoes are clean! <laughs> Man, I gotta get my hands on those. And I will, for I shall defeat him. Wow, that was a great putt. Well a boy. Well oh, done. Yeah, that's huge. Oh, that's that's huge. That's Holy smokes. Okay. So, definitely got... Some left side break there. Let's. Oh, this is an eagle putt. Oh shit. Okay. Let's put it maybe here. It kind of speeds up in the middle there a little bit. But let's give it a try. Oh, that's not. Oh, come on, come on, break some more, break some more. <laughs> oh, yeah, we were so close. I could have used the the putting guide, and I would I would have got myself an eagle out of it. But that was that was almost a, a really good one. So, yeah, man, it's a uh, that was that was definitely a thing. Um, 
another thing, and you'll you guys will actually notice it here pretty soon because I'm actually going to start uh, recording some stuff about it. Is started playing a new game recently say, with uh, some the with some friends, and I would have never guessed. Like if you would have told me, really at any point, because I've oh man, I've been very critical of you know Call of Duty and Call of Duty esque games over quite a long time just because they've really not felt like you know the kind of game for me because they're just a little bit nuts like it seems like all the people that I always see playing them are the people that are just at, like pro level and they're just doing shit that's it like I just can't even keep up with it anymore um, but oh oh just barely missed it um, but a new game just came out within like the last couple of weeks or so called X Defiant, which is basically Call of Duty. Like it's Call of Duty, and like there's it, they kind of infused it with like some Halo esque game modes, like things like uh, like King of the Hill uh, and like Domination, where there's different zones. I don't know if Call of Duty also implemented that or not, just because I haven't followed it. So I don't know if that's something that they've also been doing. Where there's, you know, like one, yeah, like King of the Hill, or there's like, uh, like two or three different zones to control. There's like an escort mission one, where there's like a robot that if you stand next to it, it starts to move. But if if the other team is standing on it, then it'll move backwards, and it's kind of like a tug of war sort of thing to see if you can get it all the way to the zone or not. And then the other team gets to do it the following round. And then there's also like, you know, unlocking different weapons and different attachments in kind of classic Call of Duty style that, that there is. And I started playing it because uh, my friends were playing it, and so I was like, ah, I'll give it a shot. I haven't played a game like this in years, because Halo is you know so much different than that, naturally. Um, I started playing it, and I actually really enjoyed it. It was, it was kind of, it kind of caught me off guard, because I really didn't expect that I would like it, really at all. Um, but it looks it looks really really good. It feels good. It handles well. It was such a breath of fresh air from Halo Infinite because Halo Infinite is still, in my opinion, a really a really imperfect, broken game in a lot of aspects. But this, it felt you know, for a brand new game, it, like it just feels so polished. And to it all up, Luke, right here. I think I may have over-aimed this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I over-aimed it. Damn. Okay. Alright, well, we're halfway there, so if, if things hold up the way that I think they're going to hold up, we should win this by, you know, three or four strokes. Or more. Especially if we can, uh, you know, cinch up the putting woes here, because... I'm definitely not on top of my game right now with that. But yeah, so I, I do look forward to playing some of that on the channel here pretty quick, because I've I've really found that I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I might even you know end up buying the battle pass. I've I've noticed that with the new with the new uh, the new update and like the new season that Fortnite's doing right now, I haven't even played it yet. I, I've heard from so many people that it is just awful. And uh, I definitely find myself probably not playing it this season. Um, it just it does not look appealing to me whatsoever. I'm not a fan of the idea that that using vehicles is basically like it dominates the entire thing, and if you don't use one, you're basically you know shit out of luck. And I think that that is a it's a really big mistake on their part because I think it, they're. With something like that, they're getting further and further away from the things that make the game great. I think I've I think I talked about this a little bit in like like an episode or two ago about they're trying to do too much to you know to be different and just kind of you know capture people's interest. And I think they just need to stick with the things that they already were doing really well, and this is not one of them. So. Also, very good putt there. That that felt a lot better than some of the ones that we've been doing before. Oh boy, pulling within one. Oh look at Tony, Tony mounting a comeback here. He's he's in the in the positives here. He's in fifteenth. He's at least you know he's giving it he's giving it a shot. 
At least he's not in like, you know, 58th at this point. I feel like I feel like our rivals have been such a disappointment so far, but I get that you know, we're also in the early tournaments of career mode right now, so I'm not expecting them to just be, you know, constantly, you know, rubber banding and being at, like, one and two, like, being right behind you every step of the way. I figure as we get a little bit later into career mode, it'll probably start to do that, but not so much right away. Let's... Soon. that seems fine. They're going with the pitching wedge. Oh, you're going to need to stop, though. You're going to be coming in a little hot there. There we go. That's That'll be a good up and down. Yeah, one thing I'm looking forward to doing, too, is I, I can't wait to get out and start playing some golf myself. I've, I've just been, especially been, you know, now that I've been playing this as much of it as I've been playing it, and I've done a little bit of sports betting on golf in, in the last month, uh, it just really has kind of reinvigorated my my want to to play so much more. I feel like we might be over aiming this. But the last time that we had, you know, five mile an hour win, we really under aimed it and we went way past it. Huh? Actually seems pretty good. Oh oh boy that was close. Almost one hopped it in there. Um so yeah I'm I'm looking forward to to getting out and doing that too. And that'll also go along with, you know, me being out and being more active. It's going to help me have more energy, which is going to be great. I'm, you know, it'll give me more energy to be able to spend time with the kids because that's something that has really, it's really bugged me a lot in the last year. I know I'm kind of going on like a deep talk here with you guys, but I feel like I haven't really been able to be there for my kids the way that I wanted to be because I've been so tired coming home from work because I'm, you know, waking up at 2 in the morning, going to work at 2.30, you know, we're starting work at, at 3 a.m. or, you know, 3.30 a.m., getting home from work at, you know, 3.30 p.m., and then just trying as hard as I can just to stay awake and, you know, make sure that all the things that I would, you know, all of my you know, parental duties, if you if you would, are taken care of, and you know when it comes down to it, there's so there's so many times where like I want to be able to do stuff with the kids, and I just don't have the energy in me to do it, and I feel awful about it. It's like I know they want to do things, and sometimes I just feel like I'm kind of letting them down in that regard. You know what I mean? Because. You know, they're not, I mean, they're, none of them are getting into the I mean, hell, my daughter's in high school at this point. And it's like, you got to be able to take advantage of those moments while they're there. Because at some point, you know, they're going to grow up and, and you know, you kind of run into that moment where they're not really wanting to spend time with you as much. You know, because they, they've got their own lives and they, they're doing the things that they want to do. And then it'll end up being like, I'm the one that's begging them for time. You know what I mean? So, it's, uh... It's something. It's kind of a it's it's a weird moment to be in as a parent. And so I feel like I gotta I gotta take matters into my own hands and give myself the best opportunity to be able to do those things. I hate that my mouse I just realized that my mouse cursor has been sitting in the middle of the screen over there this whole time. Oh my god. Uh, I apologize for the for the people that, you know, that kind of thing drives them nuts. <laughs> it just dawned on me that that thing has been sitting like that this whole time. I, I apologize for that. <laughs> oh, that's going to that's gonna kill me knowing that that's been that way the whole time. Oh, man. Because I, I also get kind of like an OCD thing about having stray cursors on the screen while I'm, while I'm playing, unless I'm playing a game that requires it being there. He leads the field oh, wow, dude, look at that view. That, that view's cool, having the uh, having the water out there. Let's do this. I feel like... I feel like that 7 mile an hour wind is really going to drive this back a little bit. So, I feel okay having it that far up, because I think that it's going to drag it back a lot. Let's test my theory. Oh, God! Did you see how close that was? 
Man, I almost just dunked that out of the air. Holy smokes. Okay. Um, I don't want this to go to waste. Let's put it, I think, right here. I think this is the move. I think it's the move. Let's go. Boy, I really, it really bit hard at the end there. Tony, are you dunking one from the fringe? And here we are with the third shot. Oh, no. That's just a regular length shot. Oh, this is on a fantastic line. Is it the right distance? Holy oh, damn, from 99 out? Bonus birdie. And look ah, guys, dude's putting me to shame over there. Yeah, he's at 300. I mean, he's still... He, he's kind of dropped down a little bit. He's in 21st, but... At least he's in the top 25. The AP poll for college football would be proud of that. Um, okay. This might be undershooting, but we'll take it. I'd rather undershoot it and be able to compensate just in case this thing decides to be a really fast green and it just rolls away like crazy. Wow, okay. Or we can have that happen. <laughs> and it just makes a monster divot. Hey, Svex, I got divot! Okay, Henny. What's he looking at with this putt? Um, okay. Maybe, like, here, I think? Yeah, maybe, like, right there, I think, is the move. What do we got? Ah, right on the money. Perfect. Putting has been much, much better in this, uh, in the back nine so far. And maintaining top spot on the leaderboard. After that... Three holes remaining, folks. Harris Hang English, Harold. Oh, Harold Varner. I remember Harold Varner. Wasn't he? Wasn't that the like the first rival that we had? Really hoping they play this one aggressively. Oh, we're playing this super aggressively. You think I'm gonna see if we can get this thing up on the on the green in one? Uh, okay, so it's gonna go a little bit to the right. Yeah, we'll see what we can do here. I'm gonna kind of do a little bit of this to give it to angle it a little and uh, grip it and rip it. This thing may end up rolling all the way off the other side of the green. <laughs> come on. Come on. Get up there. Get up there. Yeah, okay, maybe not. But now we have a unique opportunity here. Let's I think Let's put it here because there is a that break is a little bit faster than I anticipated. Oh, oh, oh. oh damn! I had the right idea though. It, it, it the green really did kind of take it and run with it a little. How about right there? Perfect. Just kind of had to shake the cobwebs out a little bit. I think was the problem. And you know, I do feel I do feel better that I'm not relying on the putting guide so much. Tony, Tony, oh yeah, Whew. almost had it. He is human. They actually can miss him every once in a while. Okay, two holes to go. Let's uh, you know, avoid any catastrophes here. And uh, we'll get out with another W. Every player is going to be salivating to get here. This could be the easiest hole by a long shot on this golf Uh oh. <laughs> Whoops. I should not have. I when I did the when I when I put the the angle on that, I kind of drug it over a little bit because I thought that the wind was going to take it a little bit more than it did. That was probably the wrong move. We're going to be okay, though. Again, as long as we don't do this two holes in a row. And realistically, we could probably still, you know, at least come away with a par. Oh, actually, we could even still get a birdie here. Oh, yeah, this isn't even a problem at all. No issue whatsoever. Let's uh, go right there. 
Ooh, ooh boy. <laughs> Aim a little bit off there. But that's an easy up and down. Birdie still secure. Man, I wish I could do that in real life. <laughs> Imagine just being good enough. Where you're like, you just absolutely shank the living hell out of your tee shot. And be like, ah, don't worry about it. We're still going to get an easy birdie out of it. I went, uh, I went on to a website the other day looking for some new golf clubs because I had I need to replace the majority of my of my uh, of my set because I've had them forever. And God, it's so expensive. Even buying even buying secondhand ones, ones that have been you know used or reconditioned or whatever. God, they're so expensive. Even just buy like there are some like it's just singular clubs. Even if you're buying them used, they're still like three hundred dollars. It's like, like, do I need to retire? Do I need to, like, do I need to have, like, a fucking retirement fund just to be able to buy some clubs? <laughs> like, like, what the hell is this? I don't think I put backspin on that. This might roll too much. Uh, nope. No, we're good. Perfect. A nice approach shot there. Very, very good. Alright, let's go right ahead and finish her up. Call it a day. We are the victor yet again, huh? Winning never gets old, but this is getting out of hand, isn't it? Another victory on the season. Hey man, the perfect the perfect season is still alive here. We have not lost yet. I don't see it happening anytime soon. But then again, we're we're diving into the unknown every uh, every week that we come in. And I gotta give props to my boy in the booth, which may, I think <laughs> the look on his face is so week, awkward. <laughs> I don't know where to look. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Daybreak long. Classic, huh? The victory, no All right. Whatsoever. Fourteen under. Where did uh, where did Tony finish up, huh? Maybe in the maybe in the top twenty five still I hope. Okay, yeah, Nike, we're getting close to that tier ten area. We'll be able to swap that out at some point. God, we had twelve birdies. Good God. But hey, at least he had positive points though. We've had a lot of times where we we ended up beating people, you know, thirty five to like negative two. Harold Varner, look at that. He got a, he got himself. He went up a hundred and twenty four positions. Oh my god! Look at him go. Okay, so we got a new grip for our irons, which timing and swing path and lie range all very good. Uh, oh wow, not not good for the flight. That is rough. Um, <laughs> women's long sleeve. I kind of like the men's long sleeve though. A little uh, golf ball with a like a pilgrim's hat <laughs> kind of looks like. I'll think about it. We'll we'll equip it later and see how it looks. Okay, rival tier up. You advance to the next tier of rivals. See who you need to defeat in the next round. Two uh, K for apparel. No thank you. Cobra for apparel. No thank you. <laughs> As, as the world turns, Ben Hogan will hit me up again. Okay, Lexi Thompson, Justin Thomas, and Xander Shoffley, huh? All right. Got ourselves a new set of things. Brooke Henderson's still there. Let's see where everybody is. Billy Horschel and Harris English at five. Uh, let's see, how do we go to the next, oh, next page? We've got, oh, Tigers at 12. Harold Varner at 15, Tony Finau 16, Doug Gim at 17. Okay, I'm trying to see if there's anybody, any other guys that I recognize here. Max McGreevy does not sound like a real person. <laughs> that, that sounds like a very video game uh, person's name. Doc Redman sounds more like a boxer uh, than he does a golfer. Uh, Lanto Griffin just sounds like Lando Griffin, which uh, was well, like a Family Guy character. I think it was. 
Kramer Hickok sounds like an NASCAR racer. But Watson all the way down to 52, huh? A little rough. Let's see who else we got down here. Anybody else? Scotty Scheffler at 85? That seems literally... It's Spieth at 89? That just seems impossible that they're that low. That's craziness. Who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll maybe they'll make a, a wild rally here a little bit later on. Rory Sabatini at 111. <laughs> Stuart Sink and him being 174 years old at 112. Interesting. All right, all right, guys. Well, let's yeah, let's go in here really quick. We did get a uh, skill point to use. I don't remember where I was going to put it. Um, get a lie range boost off of the fairway. I mean, we, I mean, pretty much every shot that we're taking, with the exception of a couple, are off the fairway. Uh, normal shots receive a timing boost from the tee. <clears throat> we don't really get in the bunker too often, so I don't think we need to really worry about that. Um, flight boost from the fairway. Chip shots receive a timing boost. Uh, I don't know what putt weight. I don't really know how that affects things here. Um... Let's let's go with let's go with the timing boost. I think any time I think any time we can you know get better shot timing for uh, for a driver always a good thing. So I think we should continue going with that. And then I think off uh, off screen I'll I'll go and check in on that on the uh, the, the fittings area and see if I can figure out why. It wasn't clearing things out properly. But oh. but until then, my friends, this has been your host, Lovely Cheese Pizza, saying thank you guys for watching. When we come back next time, we're going to go to Torrey Pine South, and we're going to go check that one out, see if we can increase the lead in the FedEx Cup some more. I'm sure we probably will. Uh, but until then, I will see you guys next time. I'm going to go grab something to eat because I'm starving to death, and I'm going to go uh, pick up my daughter from school. So I'll uh, see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Harrison also says bye. So see you guys later. <laughs>